In this video, I'm going to be attempting to trigger every single anime and manga fandom that I possibly can. I've seen a video on this regarding NBA superstars and I thought it was quite enjoyable. However, I do want to give this slight disclaimer now that even I don't believe some of the crap I'm going to say in this video, but if it offends you, then it means I did my job. I actually really pissed myself off having to re-listen to this for the editing. Let's start off with the members of the big three. Naruto. Naruto has to be one of the most confusing series to talk about. Whilst although it is extremely beautiful in its thematics and it has some great characters, it equally has as many plot holes and characters who are absolute trash. To put it in perspective, Sakura, the poster child for useless characters, is actually far from the most useless character in the series. Heck, apparently the author of the series didn't even come up with the best stuff. It was the editor who came up with Sasuke's character and the majority of the aspects that would be important to the series. You kinda have to ask yourself the question, if your sequel series is Boruto, was your series ever that good to begin with? One Piece. Despite how hard they try to make it seem different, One Piece isn't really all that great. Listen, it doesn't matter to me how long your series has been going on for. For example, I'd rather have 3-5 to five years of Michael Jordan and LeBron versus 20 years of Iman Shumpert, and that's exactly what One Piece is. It puts up big numbers, but in reality, it's a series that seems to pretty much do nothing. It has some good world building, but outside of that, most of its characters are boring and the character designs are horrendous. Now, let's be honest, the majority of the fandom surrounding Anatube and Anna Twitter would be dead if it wasn't for One Piece theories. You guys are so busy looking at every panel, constantly deep-throating Oda and One Piece every chance you get. Oh, Goda. Oh, Goat Piece. You guys seem incapable of going 10 seconds without reminding everyone how One Piece is better than Naruto and Bleach combined, despite having easily the worst protagonist out of the big three. Bleach. I'm sorry Bleach fans, I don't know how many times you need to be reminded of this, but you were easily the worst series out of the big three. Heck, you couldn't even keep your anime running properly, and One Piece somehow has managed to do so. The fact that the huge plot convenience surrounding Aizen being the mastermind behind the series is just something you guys swallowed is incredible to me. Also, the background of Bleach has so much white in it, it's the KKK's favorite manga. Ichigo's a boring protagonist, and the only reason the majority of you like Bleach is because of the cool character designs and the sexy women. The fights would actually be pretty compelling if they didn't spend the whole time explaining to their opponent how to beat him. Oh, and the typical, uh, Bleach falls off after Soul Society. Now it's time to get into my own personal big three. Berserk. Berserk is easily one of the most critically acclaimed manga of all time, and despite it being an absolute masterpiece, it could really use without the rape. I mean, come on, with all of the creativity in the world, the author couldn't think of somehow writing this series and portraying struggles without having a woman naked every five seconds? The fights are mediocre, and when Miura originally transitioned from physical to digital, it actually looked funky as hell. Also, Guts has to be one of the most uninspired names for a protagonist ever. So what do you plan on naming your protagonist? Uh, actually, I don't know. Well, where does he come from? Well, he was born from his mother there's guts and Vagabond. Vagabond, again, another very beautiful manga, especially in its illustration. But if I have to hear another Vagabond fan coming over the fact that Musashi Miyamoto said poo poo pee pee fart, I'm going to absolutely lose it. And despite whatever criticisms I had to say about One Piece, at least it could continue its release consistently. Seriously, this series was so not worth it that the author decided to drop it to create a whole nother new series. I think I rest my case. Good night, Pun Pun. Good night, Pun Pun is nothing but pure depression. I don't know why anyone would ever read this manga and or even put themselves through it. It's kind of like the whole thing with Neon Genesis Evangelion. People who like these series are just people who don't have good mental health and want to make it seem quirky by talking about how much they like these series. Hunter x Hunter, or Hunter Hunt, I really don't care. Hunter Hunter fans will constantly remind you how it's the greatest shonen of all time. Hate to break it to you, but it's no better than Naruto Bleach or One Piece. Seriously, I don't understand how a series that can't understand the basic use of dialogue and not overusing it can be better. Honestly, let's look at Hunter Hunter. It has an okay protagonist with a better deuteragonist with a solid antagonist to cast. Yeah, Oh, wow, super different. Also, Chimera Antark is extremely boring in its first half. And despite Hunter x Hunter fans posting the same five panels on Twitter, I'm sorry, you will not convince me that it has good artwork. Sure, you might not say it's bad by posting the same crap, but I'm sorry, it just is. Maybe the word bad hurts your feelings too much, so how about this one? Hunter x Hunter's artwork, for the most part, is extremely lazy and inconsistent. I don't really care about his bad back. My dad has a bad back and he still goes to work. Yeah, I'm taking advantage of the fact that YouTube is hitting the dislikes now. Me and Roboco. To all the three Me and Roboco fans out there, you all have possibly the worst sense of humor ever, and I hope your series gets axed immediately. Demon Slayer. 
Ninja said this was the greatest anime of all time. And Ninja and Tim the Tatman knows much about anime and manga as I do about Polish politics. In other words, nothing. People who are fans of Demon Slayer know better than people who are fans of Drake. People who just enjoy the typical mainstream stuff that lacks as much creativity as possible, yet try to gas it up to be some deep philosophical thing. Demon Slayer will be one of the poster boys of Shonen to come only because of its anime, considering the fact that nobody really knew about the manga before the anime even came out. You have a decent protagonist with two of the main side characters being extremely under used and one of the most disappointing final antagonists ever. You have to have literally nothing else going on in your life if you spend all day posting and talking about Demon Slayer. In fact, that applies to almost anybody who spends all day only posting about one anime on their Twitter account. For you people, I'll be leaving a link to a McDonald's application form down in the description below. Monogatari, Pedophile. My Hero Academia has to be one of the most lame series ever, and the only reason its fan base works is because most of the people who were into it have never read a decent comic book in their life. I guarantee you, almost every single major plotline and interesting character is something we've already seen from a comic book before. The MHA fandom is the exact embodiment of a place versus a place Japan. Also, Deku's an extremely uninteresting and boring protagonist for about 75% of his own series. And Horikoshi can't seem to introduce a really interesting character without them being taken out just in the next chapter. MHA fans are the equivalent of K-pop stands of Anna Twitter, and in fact, they are allergic to both sunlight and grass. Also, can you please go five seconds without having to remind everyone how your series is better than Black Clover? Honestly, that's not much of an accomplishment in the first place. Jujutsu Kaisen. Jujutsu Kaisen or JJK is another series that is hyped up more than it actually is. I'm sorry JJK fans, but I'm not going to give you brownie points all because the women in your series do more than the bare minimum. It's not better than Bleach, the only reason why anyone would think that is because of recency bias and good animation. Black Clover. Black Clover is an absolute disgrace to manga. As to how when God's green holy earth was the author such a big fan of Berserk and constantly references it in the manga while having one of the most boring protagonist, deuteragonist rivalries ever is beyond me. The villains suck, the transformations look lame, and again, it's just nothing really special. But despite all of that, it's able to have one of the largest and also equally one of the most defensive fan bases ever. But I guess one could say anything is possible with magic. Now, I would love to get into Attack on Titan and Chainsaw Man, but I'm going to spare you and leave that for my guest. Alright, Mask, I think you're being a little too nice to these animes out here. Because most of these series deserve 100% of the hate they get. For example, Attack on Titan, one of the worst things I've ever experienced in my life. The characters are trash, and the story is even worse. And I'm not just talking about the ending, I'm saying the whole thing's been trash since the beginning. Like the story starts with a boy seeing his mom get killed by a titan. Then he becomes an orphan, and now he seeks to get revenge against all titans because of his mom's death. Like, we haven't seen this kind of story a million times before. The protagonist is basically a bootleg Harry Potter. And the series continues to give you migraines until you get to the basement stuff in season 4 when it begins to get half decent. But don't worry, because us manga readers know that it goes right back to being the worst shonen with that sorry excuse of an ending. It had my man Eric crying in the ocean for a girl that looks like she pees in a urinal. You hate to see it, but the AOT cast of characters are so agonizingly bad and they just continue to be written even worse as the story goes on and I'm talking about every single character I'm talking Michael Arnold Eric Anthony reindeer and Levi's all of them are terrible and to those Levi simps out there who still love your little edgy emo k-pop star slicing up Titans well, spoiler alert, that's why he's crippled. That's why he's in a wheelchair at the end. And not even the electric kind of wheelchairs. Like, Stephen Hawking could move faster than Levi at the end of the Attack on Titan. I remember people would call Levi the spinning Beyblade of the show. And now, in the manga, he's just gonna be spinning around in his chair doing donuts at the Walmart parking lot. And since I'm talking about mangas, let me rip apart Chainsaw Man real quick. Right behind AOT, Chainsaw Man is one of the most bottom tier mangas out there. The characters is what really brings the series down. The main character is a simp who falls in love with every woman he comes across of, and he still gets no box at the end. Absolutely atrocious. And then we got Fishy Kamoto Sasuke here, who's always acting like he's better than everyone else. Man, I just, man, I, I hate him. And then we have Power. She's racist. Need I say more? Really the only good character is Makima. I was rooting for her the whole time. She's the reason why I eat birthday cakes every day, ever since she made power go out with a bang. Rest in pieces, bozo. I never liked you anyway. I was laughing hysterically when I read chapter 81. Tokyo Revengers. Tokyo Revengers was a series that when it started off was actually pretty good, but yet the protagonist can't go 20 seconds without crying, the characters look like human giraffes, 
And after a certain point within the series, it actually begins to fall off and become so uninteresting that I completely forgot what happened. Also, this series seems to be like every childhood cartoon on the Cartoon Network because it seems like adults are never present. Death Note. Death Note is only popular because the protagonist is slightly above the average IQ. Seriously, the only reason Light Yagami seems so smart is because every other protagonist in his demographic has severe autism. The series falls off heavily after L's death, spoilers, and in reality, just like Chainsaw Man is one of those series that people enjoy because it's quote unquote different, despite them only having seen like five anime and manga before then. Dragon Ball. Dragon Ball is heavily carried by nostalgia. The protagonist sucks and the deuteragonist Vegeta has the same thing happen to him in every single arc. Gets a power up, gets cocky, gets beat. Goku comes to save the day, rinse and repeat. The manga fights I can justify, but in the anime has to have the worst pacing of all time, and it reuses the same fight sequences for about 10 seconds and repeats that for a couple 20 times. The only reason Dragon Ball stays relevant is considering the fact that everyone seems to be enamored with versus battles, and Goku's one of the most busted characters of all time. Tokyo Ghoul. Tokyo Ghoul is only liked by emo sad boys who listen to Suicide Boys and Tentacion all the time and wear nothing but black. Despite trying to seem hard and edgy, I guarantee you every single Tokyo Ghoul fan moans when they wipe their ass. Uh, let me see what's left. Evangelion, extremely boring, and again, only people with bad mental health enjoy it, and ReZero is only interesting because the protagonist has to struggle more than the bare minimum in comparison to every other isekai protagonist ever. I'm more interested in Subaru, the car brand, than the actual protagonist. Full Metal Alchemist basically falls in the same boat as Hunter x Hunter, an extremely overhyped shonen because it's slightly different and does a little bit more than the bare minimum, and the the only reason it stays in relevancy nowadays is because of all the fans that try their hardest to keep it number one on my anime list. And as for Gintama, it is the most unfunny thing I have ever seen, and I shouldn't have to sit through 50 episodes of absolute garbage just to get three okay episodes to continue on so I could get a decent series. And as for the rest of you, your series just simply doesn't mean anything enough to me for me to even bring it up in this video, it's not worth my oxygen. And just a fun fact, all because you read or watch a series that barely anybody else knows about doesn't make you special, quirky, or superior. It just means you have too much time and not enough friendships. And finally, because I know there's some of you out there, at least I have the decency to read this stuff before doing videos like this. I've seen some of you talk about a series and wonder and feel like it's overrated before even bother actually reading the thing. I'm sorry you're just a contrarian who wants attention and wants to feel different. At least when I do it, it's actually entertaining.